You can get over 150 FPS in Fortnite on this laptop that fits right in sitting on your work or school desk. And it's not even meant for gaming. This is the 2024 ZenBook S16 ultra thin laptop from Asus, and its capabilities are genuinely surprising since it's packing one of these shiny new AI AMD APUs. There's actually two versions of this laptop. The more expensive one comes with the Ryzen AI9 HX370, 32 gigabytes of memory, a one terabyte NVMe SSD for 1700 US dollars. But I'm not made of money, so instead we've got the more regular model here with the Ryzen AI 9 365 and 24 gigabytes of RAM that retails for 1400 US dollars. Now I say this is cheaper and regular, but I acknowledge that this is still a very expensive laptop. But if you're willing to pay the early adopters fee here, despite it being the lower trim, this thing still kind of rips. Everything else about the two models is the exact same, including the 78 watt hour battery and this sleek ceruluminium, ceralum, ceruluminum, ceraluminum, ceraluminum ceraluminum chassis that may or may not be the same material you'll find inside of those white ceramic pots and pans but we haven't cooked anything on it yet to check the laptop when folded over is just 1.1 centimeters thick at one and a half kilograms in weight you can get it in two different colors either zumaya gray or scandinavian white which is what we have here the keyboard is spacious and brightly lit and honestly feels phenomenal and the color of the keyboard also blends in with the chassis and it's accompanied by this ergo Sense touchpad, as Asus calls it, which supports Windows multi-touch gestures, as well as a few extras. You can adjust the brightness by swiping up or down along the right edge or the volume along the left edge. Swiping right or left across the top of the touchpad allows you to fast forward or rewind media. It's pretty robust for a Windows trackpad. Speaking of robust, for ports, we've got two USB 4 Type-C ports, a full-size HDMI 2.1 port, and an audio combo jack on the left side, and a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A and SD card reader on the right. Wi-Fi 7 is also included, so you get phenomenal speeds, as well as a full HD 3D NR IR camera, which is supposed to be great at reducing noise, especially in low light conditions. And in our opinion, it doesn't far exceed comparable laptops. There is some obvious noise reduction happening, but it doesn't do a whole lot for it in low light. With proper lighting, it looks nice, but we also compared it to an iPad and thought it was still obviously behind it. But while you're looking at that webcam, you're also going to notice this screen, the Asus Lumina OLED touchscreen display that's got a million to one contrast ratio, 100% of the DCI-P3 coverage, up to 500 nits peak brightness, and a 0.2 millisecond response time at 100 in 20 hertz. They say they've achieved a 90% screen to body ratio with this sweet spot 16 inch 16 by 10 display. And honestly, with all of those numbers and specs, this hits pretty much all of the features you'd want in a screen. I have a feeling both artists and gamers will be happy with it. The only thing I personally like to see for a better gaming experience is variable refresh rate support. But again, this isn't a gaming laptop, so it's understandable. This is something that I would pick up for college that I'd also be able to game with on the side. And did I mention it's at a crisp resolution of 2880 by 1800? Yeah, that's a 3K OLED display right there. That'll provide a ton of screen real estate for multitasking, taking, notes, watching lectures, content creation, or whatever you end up doing with this laptop. But let's move on to performance, where we're going to take a look at the CPU, the Ryzen AI9 365. This thing has four Zen 5 cores and six Zen 5C cores for a total of 10 cores and 20 threads at up to five gigahertz boost. And according to AMD themselves, even though the Zen 5C cores are smaller, they're roughly the same as regular Zen 5 cores. They just clock a little bit less and perform slightly slower. Now, this laptop defaults to its standard fan profile, which limits the TDP of this chip to 17 watts. That's how much power or juice is going to the chip itself. But there's also two performance modes that push the TDP up to 28 watts. We ran a bunch of tests at both the standard and performance modes to help paint a picture of the gap in performance between the two. So you can decide for yourself if it really makes sense for you to push the power draw and suck down all that 
add extra battery juice and ramp up the fan profile. In Cinebench 2024, we see a 22% gap in multi-threaded performance and only about a 3% in single threaded. To see how the AI9365 stacks up against other recent mobile chips, I've grabbed results from Geekbench's website so you can get a feel for where it ranks. We'll start doing our own testing as we get more laptop review units here in at the UFD Tech office. But if you ask me, I think it kicks butt, pardon my French, this new Strixpoint chip is not too far from Apple's M2 Pro, which is the laptop that I use on a daily basis. Don't grab your laptops like this, kids. It's a bad idea. Which makes this one of the most efficient processors available in a Windows laptop. The 14700HX has a TDP in the 45 to 55 watt range, and this thing is nipping at its heels at just 28 watts. We also ran a couple of video production benchmarks to take a look at some real world uses. In Handbrake, we transcoded a 12 minute 4K video with the Creator 1080p 60 preset in 322 in performance mode and 413 in standard. That's 25% longer for the 17 watt mode. Puget Systems Adobe Premiere Pro benchmark also returned a score of 2717 at 17 watts and 3124 at 28 watts. That's about a 15% lead for the performance mode. All right, though. now that we got all the important work stuff out of the way, let's talk about the real star of the show, for me at least, the 880M integrated GPU. In our first video covering this chip, which you can check out right up there, Kyler did that one, we saw that the new RDNA 3.5 chip packs a heavy punch. One might even call it a heavy AI punch because the APU has AI stuff. To put it bluntly, you can rest assured that this thing beats pretty much any gaming handheld that was released before it in raw gaming performance when compared at the same wattage talking things like the RG Ally X. Now there's a chance to potentially see gaming handhelds coming out at some point that feature this new RDNA 3.5 architecture. Actually in between writing this script and filming this video, GPD just announced their Pocket 4, which is going to have the HX70. We're hoping that they're a little bit more cost effective because you're not going to be spending as much time as the rest of the accoutrement that Asus provides in this laptop. So that's just something to keep in your noodle while watching this, but the performance is quite good. You can take a look at the 3D Mark results database, we can see that the ROG Ally equipped with the 780M iGPU gets a time spy graphics score of about 2750, whereas this 880M was able to reach a score of 3126. I also ran the built-in benchmark in Cyberpunk 2077 to quickly compare to the Ally and got around the same difference, averaging around a 10% increase if you ignore the memory limited original Ally stutters. So I think it's probably fair to say the 880M will average about a 10 to 15 15% lead over any device using the 780M at around 28 to 30 watts. You can check out our dedicated video again on the 880M graphics if you want to see exactly what it can do in games. But as far as thermal performance goes, the cooling on this laptop is great at keeping the APU cool. It's just that the surface gets mighty toasty in performance mode. We might actually be able to cook that egg after all. In Cinebench 2024, in the 28 watt performance mode, we saw the CPU temperature settle in at around 80 degrees. In Cyberpunk, the fans ramped up to hold about the same temperature, if not a couple degrees cooler in the upper 70s. The GPU temperature was always way cooler, so I don't think it's really worth worrying about. Still, in performance mode, we saw a total system draw in Cinebench was about 31 watts on average, whereas gaming pushed both the CPU and GPU to their max to reach a lap melting 50 watts. That might sound silly, but seriously, setting this thing in your lap while playing Cyberpunk in performance mode will uh, make it very difficult to enjoy yourself unless you find yourself stuck in a walk-in freezer with your laptop. I recorded a surface temperature on the underside of this of 52 degrees Celsius and 48 degrees on the keyboard. That's around 120 degrees Fahrenheit. On the bright side, we already saw that this cooling is effective at keeping the internals cool. It just dumps the heat onto the metal chassis to dissipate it, which is effective. That's kind of what you want. It's also not super loud in our opinion. In any case, set the dang laptop on a table if you're gonna push it in performance mode or get you one of them laptop coolers to act as a skin buffer. All right though, moving on to battery life now. Regardless of the resolution selected, the entire system drew between six to eight watts while watching YouTube. This should mean you can expect a solid 10 hours of video playback or light web browsing. Playing Cyberpunk on battery in the default 17 watt mode meant that the total power consumption settled in at around 31 watts. So theoretically, you could see around two and a half hours of battery while playing similarly intensive AAA video games. As a reminder, this has 
has roughly the same capacity battery as the ROG Ally X. And at full bore performance mode, you'd likely be looking at around 90 minutes because the system draw reaches 50 watts. And while I idle, we closed the lid to give it a 20 minute power nap and it was still at 100% after opening it back up with hardware info reporting the power consumption dropping to as low as 0.16 watts and it averaged around two watts, which could mean it would take between 10 to 20 days for the battery to completely drain while closed if it's at full charge. And as you've undoubtedly noticed if you've shopped for a new laptop lately, loads of manufacturers are heavily marketing their AI performance. And yeah, it's because we got Qualcomm, Microsoft, and now AMD attaching AI to the model name of everything they put out. Even Intel has their core ultra AI PCs. AMD is full steam ahead on AI, so much so that they completely changed the naming scheme for the laptops. You'll notice that these chips are called the AI 300 whatever. That's because they're running the second generation of AMD's neural processing unit or MPU, which they claim puts out 50 tops of AI performance or 73 tops from the whole processor. Also, TOPS, if you don't know, is the term now commonly used to measure AI performance. It stands for Terra Operations Per Second. AMD claims that this is their third generation of AI laptops, somehow. So that's why it's the AI 300 series. Even though these chips only contain the second generation of the XDNA NPUs, they, for sure, in no possible way, called it the 300 series because Intel is getting ready to launch their 200 series of the Core Ultra lineup and wanted to have a higher number. It would never be that petty or stupid. And even though we're being forced to talk about AI tops and NPUs because of marketing, it's really hard to find a way to otherwise illustrate or even describe at all what the AI performance looks like on this thing. Even the AI applications everyone's losing their marbles over probably aren't going to be used by the vast majority of people who purchase this laptop. Most of it either runs in the cloud or runs on a really expensive graphics card that costs more than this laptop altogether. And even for things like Microsoft Copilot Plus, they're finding that things like Paint are actually offloading it to the cloud even though you can't get Copilot Plus on the AI300 chips just yet. They're only available on the Qualcomm ones. They're not using the NPU that's baked in. But it's still worth looking at the performance though since the singularity is like a few months away from now or something at this point. But the one benchmark out there that's easy to get hold of is Geekbench's ML, which only tests one aspect of AI performance. And if it means anything to you, it got a score of 3296 in the ONNX CPU inference test and 6371 in the ONNX direct ML inference test, both of which were run in the 28 watt performance mode. All right, mandatory AI segment is over. The 2024 ZenBook S16 looks to be a jack of all trades. It's almost $1,500, but it brings even greater performance to the thin and light Windows laptop category, literally punching above its weight class. The build quality is really nice. It's very thin, rigid, and thin. It's a tiny little thing. The beautiful display combined with the large battery and high performance make for a laptop that is sure to satisfy many. I'm really looking forward to seeing what else these AI300 chips can bring us in terms of form factor and performance. This laptop shows that x86 can remain competitive with Apple in their pursuit to be the number one in performance per watt. And compared to the new Snapdragon X Windows chips, you're getting leading CPU performance, healthy battery life, but domination in graphical performance something that the Qualcomm chips absolutely suck at. And props to Asus for designing something that absolutely does look and feel on par with the best out there.